Okay, Nintendo, look, I know that you have loosened up your regulations on getting games onto your platforms. The Nintendo Seal of Quality days are long gone, and it's mostly for the better, right? Uh, You are enabling essentially anyone who wants to release games on your platform to do so. You have opened up your platform. You have been a little restrictive, at least in North America, with indies, as in you are slowly trickling indie developers in. So not every single indie developer that wants to make a game for your platform can do so at this time. But you are slowly expanding the roster and letting them in. And pretty much any game, once those guys are in, they can pretty much release any game they want. The approval process is pretty simple. But that doesn't mean everything is all hunky-dory. In fact, we might be running into a problem here. And this probably isn't specific to Nintendo Switch, but it's a problem that needs to be addressed. Uh, In Japan, a game has released called Mujo. Uh, It is a mobile game coming to Switch. Now, inherently, there's nothing wrong in my mind with mobile games coming to Switch. If the port is bad, it's the fault of the developers. And for the most part, people think the port is bad here because it kept the aspect ratio of the phone. uh, And some people are having an issue making it work in portrait mode. Like, you can buy stands that set your Switch up in portrait mode or not portrait mode, whatever it is. You know, the long way. And uh, you could enjoy uh, the game that way, but then there'll still be black bars in this game because, well, it isn't really fully optimized well for the Switch. But that's neither here nor there. How well the game runs or not, that's all on the developer, and uh, Nintendo doesn't control that. I mean, you could argue Nintendo should have told the Rhyme developers to put in more work, but again, it's not their game. It is what it is. That's not the issue. Nintendo isn't going to make this game for these companies. The problem is that Mujo is a free-to-play game on phones with tons of microtransactions. And there's, I mean, that's just the way it generally works. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But on Switch, oh baby, on Switch, it costs money on top of the microtransactions. Let me explain. The game, when converted to USD, uh, costs $10.78 on the eShop in Japan. So put that in perspective. You have a free-to-play game that runs exactly like it does on mobile phones in terms of having the microtransactions, which you do go through the Nintendo eShop to, to, to pay for those microtransactions, but whatever. It's literally the same game with the same monetization system that's 100% free on mobile devices, selling for nearly $11 on, before you even get to that point. Here's the problem with this, and this is where Nintendo needs to step in. This is where I fault Nintendo. Nintendo should not allow games that are free to play, that have zero changes, to release on Switch for a premium. Now, you can argue maybe they should allow it to sell for a dollar. Okay, maybe you can get away with that because apparently there is a a quote-unquote Switch tax in that uh, Nintendo needs an x percent from your game and if your game is free to play uh and it doesn't offer a base buy-in price nintendo doesn't get their cut so maybe they won't allow your game on the platform you could argue that's a thing i think it's bollocks if it is a thing but okay fine so my problem then is that the game is eleven dollars instead of one dollar you cannot take a game directly port it from a mobile device put it on switch charge money for it when it's a free-to-play game with free-to-play game design and not make any changes to it if you are going to charge money for the game the idea of charging money for a free-to-play game on switch should be to get rid of the microtransactions But of course, this game isn't going to get rid of the microtransactions because that's where they make a majority of their money. It's the Super Mario Run effect. Does Nintendo make more money off of Super Mario Run at $10 a pop versus Fire Emblem Echoes? No, they make a ton more money off Fire Emblem Echoes, which is free to play with microtransactions. Uh, So, yeah, it's just uh, Echoes. I don't know why I said Echoes. I meant Fire Emblem Heroes. But yeah, it's it's crazy. Heck, they probably make more money off microtransactions off Echoes as well. Anyways, uh, getting back to my point here, Nintendo needs to step up and do something about this because while I am happy they are creating an open marketplace, 
it's also one that cannot, it, it absolutely cannot let it fall into the Steam trap. You see, Steam today isn't very good. Uh, I'm not saying it's not a very good game delivery platform, and I'm not saying it's not very good at allowing cross-game communication. Steam has some benefits to it, but Steam does a very, very poor job curating the content. They just replaced Greenlight with some new program, and the new program is, like Steam Direct, I think it's called, it's even worse than Greenlight. It is allowing so much crap to get through that hardly anyone can find the good games that release on a daily basis. And I'm not even going to call this game a bad game. I, I think from the video I have seen, it looks okay. It's not something I would personally play on Switch. It's something I would more, if they would make an English version of it, I would probably play it on my phone. But the point is that Mujo is, isn't a terrible looking game per se. That's not the problem. The problem is just everything else about this game. Now, I, I got to give full credit. All the video for this was uh, it comes from uh, Nintendo. And so I'll have a link to his video uh, down below and you guys could check that out. But this is just ridiculous. And I, I, do you guys agree that Nintendo needs to do something about this? As mad as I can get at the developers for this, they're greedy. I mean, let's just be honest. The company behind Mujo is being super, super greedy, asking for a premium price for a mobile game that's free to play while keeping all the same mechanics and money-making things in the game that made it free to play in the first place. And some of you might say, hey, that's the way the industry is going. We have $60 premium games that offer you know microtransactions, and I get it. But this isn't a $60 premium game. This is a game that isn't even worth $11 uh, if you're going to throw microtransactions on top. So, I don't know. You guys let me know if you think Nintendo should start doing something about this and maybe tighten their grip just a little bit on the approval process. I think if they tighten it just ever so slightly, they can fix it. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rufflejans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you in the next one. Yes.